Good evening, OwnRev family, and thanks for joining us for the Monday Evening Devotion, brought to you by Own Your Health Revolution. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with my co-host, Gloria Strait, and she will be closing us out in prayer today. We do this every Monday evening at 8.03 Central Standard Time, and it's about a 10 to 20 minute devotional to start your week off with Jesus. And remember, how you start your week is how you rule your week. Today, we're going to be talking about planning and the importance of planning, but also the importance of including God in your plans as well and allowing him to be the ultimate planner in directing our footsteps. And I've always lived by the saying, when you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. I lived that in sports growing up and in school and even in starting a business and running a business and getting the job done requires careful planning and execution. And not long ago, I had a big plan for great adventure in life. And this has happened countless times now that I think of it. I remember when I was much younger, I had a bit of a timeline. And I know I'm not alone because I've had discussions with a lot of my friends where when we're in our like late teens, early 20s, we create this timeline. And I figured I'd probably get married in my mid-20s, but then my mid-20s came and gone and it wasn't too big of a deal because I was preoccupied with getting my career going as a doctor and I'm actually quite grateful I didn't get married in my mid twenties, but surely I'd be married by my late twenties because I would need to start having babies by then. And lucky for me, I did not get married any sooner than my late twenties because I found the man of my dreams, but the baby thing didn't exactly happen as expected. Then I started my practice uh, and some things I planned never happened and I'm grateful that I missed a few bombs in in my planning, but some things did happen outside of my planning as well and some were great blessings and some things I'm still trying to find purpose in, but a few things I never would have planned happened in the last few years, I'd say, especially the last year, and I would never have planned to sell my practice that I've been practicing in for over 11 years and it's still quite unbelievable to me. I would never have planned that I'd be living in Austin, Texas. I would never have planned that I would not have living children and a family of my own. I never would have planned that I'd be starting all over in in a new business endeavor. But all these things that I never would have planned have brought me new opportunities and new conversations that I also never would have planned. And it's allowed me to build character and spiritual strength in the process. It's allowed me to learn to embrace the process of life instead of just getting to the next destination or the next level or checking off the next goal that I accomplished because that's kind of seemed how life was going for me. And it has allowed me to connect with so many people in such a different way. It's allowed my spiritual maturity to grow with such confidence and my spirituality and my relationship with God has become a stronghold in all of my future plans. I know that for certain. And it's allowed me to plan in a much different way. Instead of just planning for my own goals and my own dreams, it's allowed me to really seek God's will for my life and literally include him and consult him in all of my plans, asking for guidance and discernment and clarity. If I've made it sound like it's all rainbows and sunshine at any point, I assure you that success never comes free. It always has a price. Success in business as well as spiritual growth and maturity. The rain is necessary for the rainbow to appear. But in all of this, I realize that my plans, it should not be what I am doing, but rather who I am becoming in the process. And God desires to have transformation of the heart. But then again, maybe you're like me at any point in this story. For example, one of the things, when I had an ectopic pregnancy and people told me that God has a plan in this, I knew in my heart that it was true. And, I, and even though it was what I needed to hear and I actually clung to those words, and I'm very grateful and thankful for those of you who spoke those words, so this is nothing personal, but those same words somehow felt like, rubbing salt in the wound, right? It's like, God has a plan. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't see it. Like, how can, how can God exist in this situation? But the Bible is full of people like us. People that I would think might wonder if God really had a plan or even existed. 
there's a few examples I have written down for you. And David was promised to become the next king of Israel. However, he was on the run from Saul that wanted to kill him. Daniel had become a leader of Babylon, spreading the God's word. But first he was kidnapped. They renamed him and then faced death on multiple occasions. And then one of my favorite stories is about Joseph. It took him 13 years of endurance and character building for him to fulfill this part of God's plan. He was sold as a slave into Egypt by his own brothers, betrayed, imprisoned. He must have wondered a lot where God was and what he was doing and if he was even involved in his life or even cared. But finally, as a prepared vessel, Joseph was placed in the highest position of the land, second to the Pharaoh, and commissioned to execute God's plan for saving the world from famine. So the Lord had surprises of his own for, for Joseph's life. And revealing himself to his brothers, Joseph summed it up beautifully. So in Genesis 50, 20, he says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And then another example, then there was Jesus, the best example of all. He had faith in God's plan like none of us probably ever could imagine. And even if it hurt temporarily, God's plan is good. And he trusted his father and his savior for, the, for all of us. And life is always sending unexpected surprises. But thank God, nothing takes him by surprise. God's plans are always better than ours. And we think we know what's best for our future, but God says in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you see, we can plan, but we must realize that, when, that, that we need to be flexible allowing for God's blessing and allowing for the moments he is teaching us. When we plan, we must allow God to direct. We might think we're in charge of where we're going, but the word of God says in Proverbs 16, verse nine, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And in uh, 19, Proverbs 19, 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So I want you to realize that Christ cares more about the transformations of the heart than about our temporary comfort. Whatever we may be planning, do it for God. And let us not be haphazard about it. We should be devoting our heart and soul to what we feel we can contribute to God's kingdom. If it's caring for your family, be completely devoted. If it's serving at your church, be completely devoted. If it's building leaders in your organization, be completely devoted to it and set a godly example in your business. And I want to wrap up this devotional with one last Bible verse, which happens to be one of my favorite. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Thanks so much everyone for joining us. Glow, if you will close us out in prayer, I would appreciate that. I sure will. That was an awesome word as far as understanding that, you know, God has a plan for us and we just need to walk it out with him. So Father God, thank you. First of all, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being Jesus. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being Lord of our over our lives. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And tonight we just want to have Philippians 1 and 6. Um, it says, be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And we want to have that as our realization, just like Colin spoke about going with your will, going with your plans that you have for us. Allow us to Remember that you have began a good work in us and we want to carry it out to completion until you come back, Jesus. So I just pray that everything that was said on this devotion will become our re reality of how we think about things, even if things seem not to be going the way 
we think they should be going or if we're in a, a tough test and trial in, in our lives or in the wilderness place, allow us to know that, you know, you have ordered our uh, steps and we just need to walk in it. We need to walk in your will. And let's pray for this week that we are, uh, we've already begun, that it will be nice and productive. And just pray for those for healing, all the prayer requests that has been lifted up and requested that we lift them up to you for healing. Whatever the need is, Lord, we just trust that you're going to do it. And I do do want to pray a special blessing over Holland. Today is her birthday. I just pray that you will continue to um, shine your light on her so she can be a light to this world and allow the dreams and visions that you've given her to come to pass. And we just thank you for what you're doing in her life because she is changing lives with not only her testimony, but just sharing you, period, the end. So we just want to lift her up as she continues to carry out the plans and purpose that you have set for her. And that's it. Um, I, I'm praying for a long time, I guess. But uh, we just ask all these, all these things in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, Will. And thanks for that prayer. I, I'm used to praying over other people. And I know we pray over each other, but it, I don't really get to hear that out loud. So oh, that was humbling. Thank you so much. And thanks to each and every single one of you on this call and listening to the recording. You continue to inspire us and you play such a major role in the own rev movement so that we can not only better ourselves, but most importantly, further God's kingdom and what he's doing in our personal lives and what we're called to then go out and do for other people. I do want to remind you that we do record these and post them on YouTube and social media. So if this message touched you, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and family. Thank you so much for joining us and stay classy, folks.